Welcome everybody. Hello, hello. This is our kickoff to August, which is our new ambassador coaching night, which is always super fun. So if you are new and game for popping in the chat or on the live stream in the comments, who you are, where you're from, and maybe when you started. If you're brand new, tell us. We want to know who you are and just say welcome. We're super excited that you've joined our amazing community. Uh, my name is Megan Goff. If you don't know me, I was introduced to Plexus about eight and a half years ago, actually 10 years ago, but said no for almost two years. <laughs> and it's just been a big blessing to be able to share Plexus with other people. So mm, also just say really fast that for me, when I started, it was just for products. I was not planning to be, you know, a double diamond family with Plexus. It was, that was not on my radar. But once I saw the probiotic take Benjamin's eczema away, he was four years old at the time, I felt like I had unlocked the mystery behind skin and gut, well, skin health, skin issues, and which was all related back to gut health. So I was very pumped to just tell all the moms. <laughs> and I was super excited about that. So that's really a huge reason why I started to just share and pop pop on Facebook every so often and just share a little bit. So we're going to kick off here and I'm just going to start us with prayer. So if you're game for joining me for that, we'll go ahead and kick off here. Lord, we just do want to thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to just talk with new ambassadors tonight. I just thank you for the excitement and momentum on our teams right now. I thank you for so many people excited about their health journeys and willing to share the products that are helping them and or maybe just starting for the first time for this business because they see value in our community. They know that the supplements are really good and they're excited to share what they know with others and to bring in an income for their families. So we just pray a blessing over our time here tonight. I pray you give Carissa and I wisdom as we share from our own experience, as we ask curious questions, as we just talk about all the new things. So we just commit our time to you tonight and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So Carissa and I just wanted to pop on real quick and share a couple of things. Just if you're brandy new thinking, <laughs> what do I do? Where do I go? You know, I've gotten some questions about, you know, how, how do I start? Like, where do I start? And so I'll just answer real fast. The first place to start is, this is my personal, my, my personal go-to. <laughs> you start with prayer and just asking God, who can you bless with this opportunity? Who can you bless with these products? And it is a very, very freeing place to work from when you are just praying over what this needs to look like for you and, and who you can help. And it's actually very exciting just to power partner up with the Lord and be like, okay, Lord, bring them to me and or put them on my heart so I can reach out and tell them about what we have. So that's where I would start. The second thing I always encourage people to do is just to take the white paper challenge and make a list of people. Just start the list. You don't have to like finish it tonight, but start the list and just jot down some people that you that just come to mind after you pray for the products and also for this business. So starting out super simple. And I want you guys to know that this, this is very simple. It doesn't have to be crazy complex. It's just the simplicity of sharing with other people what we have and being excited about what you're learning about. Okay, you do not have to know everything. All you have to really know is that you're excited to start and you want to do it with friends. Like it doesn't have to be anything more than that. And I'll just say really fast also, sometimes I get objections to like, I don't want to sell to my friends or whatever. But the whole concept of selling, honestly, from the get go, I've never felt like I was selling anything to anybody. And again, there's nothing wrong with sales. <laughs> the world runs off of business. It is totally fine to pay the service people in your life. And that's, we're basically being compensated for referring people to Flexus, right? Thankfully, we don't have to stock inventory. We don't have to be in charge of shipping or cu customer service type stuff, anything like that. So I'm very, very thankful that we don't have to have closets full of inventory. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Like, yay for that. Uh, but we do have to be willing to open our mouth about what we have and be excited about it. And so I just am so thankful that it is such a simple 
business really and it can be as small or as big as you want it to be it doesn't have to be a business for you if you don't want to if you don't want it to be it can be a casual sharing thing and i have just felt like from the get-go it's been me sharing what's blessed our family and that has really i don't know that my my mindset has just been like i love to share with people i love to help people get healthy i love to help people build businesses it's the best ever and it's very fun so carissa do you have anything to tag on to that yes um I want to, everybody, you you don't have to keep your camera on, but can everybody take a minute and turn your camera on? Because I always like to remind people when we jump on calls like this, I always like to, you know, turn around and take a little selfie with my, with my Zoom chat, because I like to expose my audience to the fact that we have a community here, that it's uplifting, it's super supportive, and that they're never, ever, ever alone. Whether their goal is to try and get healthy or whether they're trying to make some money, they're not in it alone. Um, and, and I just like to continually expose and remind my audience of that fact. So thank you all. You're so sweet to humor me on this, to turn your cameras on real quick, because I'm going to take my selfie. And that was all I wanted to add, Megan. I, I did do a plug on my team kickoff 30 minutes ago about the Trisha Rieger um, 10 minute training that you and I were both loving. Mm -hmm. And it's the importance of dialing up the energy level. And it, it really struck me when Trisha said, sometimes uh, the post she's making is like a video of her running across the yard or jumping in the pool with her clothes on. And it's not necessarily related to the caption, but it's the goal is to show energy because energy is so magnetic and so attractive. And it was just very convicting to me. I mean, I feel like I have pretty good energy. I've made it this far, but just very convicting that every every time I am texting a customer about their product journey or every time I'm making a post or every time I'm doing a video to train my team to take that dial and just crank it up, crank up the energy level. And she actually said, um, well, where is it? She said, you need to have the highest version of energy that you possess. And I told my team, Megan, like, it doesn't mean spastic, wacky energy. That's one kind. But I have people on my team that have a very sweet, calm spirit, but I feel their energy when I'm with them. You know what I mean? But like, just really dialing up the intensity level of it. So I wanted to share that here too. And I, I also need to take my selfie. So you can take it back while I do that. <laughs> okay. Yes. <clears throat> Alrighty. So the first thing that we encourage people to do is to get a plus one. So this concept of bless a friend, and this is something that we worked on our on our team with in the month of July and had an amazing, amazing results with that. Really, we had a lot of people bless a friend in, the, in July. And so we're going to continue that. And that's going to be a focus for the first 10 days of the month is to encourage a lot, a lot of you, all of you, all of us to bless a friend meaning engage in conversation and whoever you, whoever comes to mind that you jot down on your list, the idea is not to just let them stay on the list, but to actually act with urgency, kind of like what Trisha was talking about with, you know, act with urgency of like messaging them or texting, voice messaging or calling if that's, or maybe you're gonna see them in person. You're like, Hey friend, I wanted to let you know, like I just started these all natural supplements. I'm actually super excited about it. And you know, it never felt inorganic when I started Plexus. I had a network of people that had autoimmune thyroid issues that I had connected with over the past like two years, two or three years that I was struggling in my health. And so it felt very normal to reach out and be like, Hey, I found some supplements. I think that you would really like, like I can, I can share more of the scoop with you. Let me know. Let me know if you're open. Okay. So you're not asking for a close or the sale. You're just letting them know that you found something that you're excited about. And then you're just finding out if they're open to learning more. Okay. So the name of the game is after you pray and after you make your list, you're going to start letting people know about it, whether that's through text, calling on the phone, seeing them at church or when, whenever, right? So in light of a little to-do list, that is, that is the jam. Like I, that, that is, there's really not much more to this business than make a post, make a list, message, invite, make a post, make a list, message, invite. And I'll say really fast, posting on social media has been a huge way that I have grown 
my plexus business. And so it is the best thing ever. Yes, it can be uncomfortable, especially if you're not really a sharer on social media. I had to get over that fear. Like, welcome to personal growth because you're going to you're going to do things that are going to bump you out of your comfort zone in order to help more people, right? The more success we have is simply a reflection of all the people that we've been able to serve. And if that means that I'm going to make like get uncomfortable in order to reach more people that's okay okay and you can do it within your authentic way <laughs> um, we're not asking you to be somebody else or to be me or to be carissa or anyone like you have a way of sharing and talking to people that you know that is perfect they just need you right and it i feel like it is an act of love <laughs> and sacrifice to do what we do because there's a level of it was very uncomfortable for me to post on Facebook and still sometimes it is because we're vulnerable and people track I mean it's that whole selfie thing some of us are just going to have to get over that right and I started to, to, to notice that the people that were the most effective at their plexus posts were the ones that showed their face people don't track with a picture of a product bottle <laughs> they track more with you and the kids on the couch drinking your pink drink or whatever right so um just in terms of a little to-do list that is where i would start and really as i've worked to diamond and then justin's account has gone diamond and then we're working on a third um plexus business with going emerald it's it's the same four things over and over posting make a list message people and invite invite to an event Typically, that's what it means. Or just invite them to try the products, right? Carissa, do you want to piggyback off that? Yep. Okay. So I said this to my team half an hour ago. On Sunday, our preacher preached out of Hebrews 10, 24. You've probably all heard it. Um, let us consider how we may spur one another on to good deeds. And he really painted the picture for me when he talked about being from Texas and how spurs what are they? They're those like little metal stars on your cowboy boots that you use to kick the horse in the ribs. And he was, he was really, so when you were saying like, it's okay to be bumped out of your comfort zone in order to help more people. I wrote that down, Megan quote, because the goal is to help and serve more people. And sometimes, you know, I need my sideline sisters to spur me on a little bit. And sometimes that feels a lot like I'm getting kicked in the ribs with someone's cowboy boots, but I want to help more people. I want to change my life. I want to change my team's life. I want to raise up jewels. So I just wanted to put that verse on in your ear, Hebrews 10, 24 for the week. Um, consider how you can spur others on and consider how you can put yourself in a position to be spurred on toward good deeds. Thank Perfect. you. Okay. So, um, Okay, who are we going to coach first? Are you going to coach first? Because I don't know if my people are on. Okay, so I know Heather is on. And so you're coaching with Heather. And if you guys want to start, and then if you, if okay. your person is on, I can, we can kick it over to me. Fabulous. Okay. I also want to open it up. If you guys have questions, pop it in the chat. Because like this time is for you as a new person getting started with sharing. Like we want to address like your top fears, any, any like, logistical or comp plan questions, whatever you might have as a question, there's really nothing off limits. Like if we don't know the answer, we'll go, we'll go find the answer for you. Okay. So I just wanted to offer that to pop in the chat and, um, Heather, hi, are you game? Are you game for, hi, I'm here. Good to see you. Okay. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit about you and why you started and maybe, uh, a top focus for this month and if you have a specific like any specific questions that you want to ask me or talk about like fears or frustrations whatever it is okay um so i kind of watched krista from the sidelines um for about eight years i'm a little stubborn so um but anyways after having my third i just had a really really hard time with weight loss no matter what i did um, I was working out, I was eating healthy, but it just was not, it wasn't working. So, um, I had to try something out of the box. I had mentioned to my husband, you know, fatigue and things that I had dealt with 
for my whole life, but they seem to be getting worse. And at 31, um, I don't know, it wasn't something that I felt was normal, you know, to want to sleep 12 hours and it's not depression. It was just, I was always tired no matter how many hours a day I slept and then would still feel like I needed a nap and, um, not being able to lose weight and anxiety, just a lot. And I was like, okay, there has to be something outside of the box that I'm just not seeing. So I'd seen a couple of posts from Chris and I was like, okay, let me try this. So I actually sent her a message that said, I'm giving it one month, <laughs> giving it one month. And if it doesn't work, I'm not doing it anymore. And she's like, okay. <laughs> so she said, so what does that mean? As far as products, she had sent me like the slim combo pack with a couple of things. And then she had also talked about the reset and I said, well, if I'm giving it one month, I want to do, I'm going to do it right. So I ordered the slim, I ordered Metaburn, ordered ease, um, and I'd ordered a reset. So started doing the slim. I was allergic to the ease. Hopefully that will change eventually once my gut decides it wants to behave. Um, but I took the Metaburn and then I did the reset and I ended up losing almost five pounds in the reset and kept about three of those pounds off. And y'all, I am on just finishing my second month and I am almost down 10 pounds. Yeah. Oh, so I am so excited. Um, it's, it's crazy. I, we went to church camp last week and this is probably too TMI, but I'm going to go there. So I have a lazy bell. I don't, when I am on vacation or anything like that, no matter how long I'm gone, I will be constipated that entire time. I will not use the bathroom. I don't care if it's a week. I don't care if it's two weeks. I will not go. That has been my normal forever. So this past month, instead of doing that combo, I did the triplex and I did the bio cleanse, the probio and the slim. That's been my normal for this month. I, t- <laughs> I took my blender to church camp with me <laughs> for my slim, used my husband, my husband's truck as an outlet. And I was like, ah, I'm taking it. I don't care how weird that is. So that's what I did the entire week of camp. I took my bio cleanse. I took my probiotic and I was regular for the first time ever while I was not at home. And I was like, that's it. This has like literally changed my life. So our entire camp was about following the Holy Spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit. We get home and I was in the shower. I don't remember what day it was. I think it was Saturday. And all of a sudden it was like, God gave me a vision of how far I can go with this and debts being paid off. And it was just like a fire was lit under me. And it was like, okay, no more fear, no more hesitation, no more half efforts. I'm going to go all in and I'm going to do this. And if I fall on my face, at least I fall on my face with God. It's okay. He's got me no matter where I end up. He's got me. And I'm not going to worry about that. So I called my husband in my bedroom and I said, here's what, here's what I think that I should do. And he is CPA. He's a numbers guy. He's a logic guy. And he said, okay, I support you. I'm behind you 100%. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. That's all I need. Like I have you, I have Jesus. I don't need any more. So that day I went live for my very first time, which I had told Chris, I will never do. <laughs> I went live and I told my story and I've had a few people since then kind of message me kind of like fishing, you know, like I got a couple nibbles, but I don't want to scare them off. So I gave them the information. So I'm here if you need and if you have any questions, whatever, and I'm following back up with them. So anyways, that's where I'm at. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for being so thorough in what you shared. There was a lot there. You guys, I hope you were taking notes or just listening (laughs) with attentiveness because, well, one, she said she's watched Carissa for eight years. Mm -hmm. I was tempted to be really discouraged once I caught the vision for Plexus (laughs) that I didn't start when I first heard about it two years before 
you know, previously. Cause I was like, ah, I could already be diamond by now, but I'm not, I'm just starting. And so I just want to remind everybody that the time, your timing is perfect. Okay. If you would have started eight years ago, it would have been different. It would have been a different journey. Right. And so I, I just, I mean, I think a lot of us are believers here. And so we can trust that God has our story and is crafting it in the perfect timing with the perfect people and the perfect community. I mean, Carissa as a leader is a different leader now. I think she would agree with me. Um, and so am I, than we were eight years ago. And so what a blessing that you're starting now because you have so many people that have paved the way <laughs> and have learned and are still learning, right? And so loved what you shared about your health wins. That is amazing. Like that, I mean, that is your story <laughs> and people cannot argue with your testimony because that's yours. And so I would just encourage all of you who are maybe just starting your products, be consistent, drink your water, talk to your sponsor to help, help you help whatever, get, get the results that you want because these products are amazing. And, and like Heather said, like they're life-changing, like the sluggish bowel thing. <laughs> if you've ever struggled with potty issues, like it's not fun, not fun at all. And a lot of people don't realize that going number two, every like once a week or once every two weeks is not normal, even though it's their normal, <laughs> they don't realize how much better and clearer and how many less headaches and less hormone problems that they will have when they're eliminating properly. <laughs> so huge win. I love that <clears throat> you started triplex and how, and, and I was just thinking the W I T acronym, <laughs> whatever it takes, meaning we have got to be proactive with our health. There are too many, well, not even middle-aged people, young people struggling with autoimmune crazy type stuff <laughs> because their bodies are not healthy. They're not functioning. They're not operating on all cylinders. Right. And so anyways, just proud of you, Heather, for being so proactive with your health. Um, I love that you said that there was a vision for you. There's, you guys know that scripture in Proverbs, it says with, where there is no vision, the people perish. And so vision is a huge part of what we are always teaching, always talking about, because that is your fuel. That is literally your rocket fuel. And so I love that you said your fire is lit. <laughs> and when you have a vision that's outside of you, that you feel like has kind of been downloaded to you from the Lord, like no one can argue with that either, right? Your testimony and your personal vision. And so I, yeah, well, even the half, the half effort concept, I think that is when we're operating from a place of fear and not from a place of vision. And, you know, the scripture that talks about, um, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And so when we're operating from fear, we don't have a sound mind. We're not, um, we're not walking in power and probably not love because we're walking in fear. So I would challenge all of us to think back to the moment. If you haven't had the moment yet, then that's your next, <laughs> that's your assignment is to have a moment where you can go back to and remember. So Heather had that moment recently, just big vision downloaded to her. And so I would just encourage you. I remember the spot we were at on this road, south of town, just going out for a drive in the country. And I remember telling my husband, I'm going to be a diamond. If, if Shoshana can do this thing, I can do this thing. Okay. I saw these kind of more, you know, what in my mind, when I started as a silver, they were more successful than me, like bigger network. She had a, a nationwide or herbs to online herb store. Like, of course, she's going to have people to sell to, right? My, the friend that I met from the health food store in Indianapolis, I'm like, of course, she's going to be successful. They have like a huge client base. Of course. Like, who am I? little homeschool mom from a town of 700 people. Like what? <laughs> but I decided that I was going to be successful on that little road, south of town at sunset. <laughs> and I told my husband. And so I would just encourage you guys to get a vision, have a moment, pray for a moment. And I was thinking to Heather, when you said that your you told your husband and he was like, go for it, babe. <laughs> it reminded me of what my husband tells me. Please God, please your spouse, and then do as you please. Guys, 
it really doesn't matter who says whatever about you or who who thinks whatever about you you and I want to I want to mention this because Genevieve said this the other day on a call and I like totally loved it she said you can be a lovely lovely person and be wildly successful those two things can be married <laughs> okay and I would just say all of us that are successful are lovely people otherwise we wouldn't be successful like they go hand in hand and so we need to show up in our biggest, most beautiful, bold, belief-filled way. <laughs> and it comes from having that vision in that moment. Okay. Anyways, I don't want to belabor the points, but um, I, and I love that you went live. Anytime that my business has felt like it stalled out and I've gone live, it always brings more conversations. And so whoever needs to hear, go live and tell your story, do it. Do it more than you think you need. Most of us don't go live often enough. People need to hear from us. It doesn't even have to be Plexus related, but just like figure out something, some way that you can add value to your audience and maybe just humor. I did a little video live of my daughter coming in with the kitty cat the other day. I think it was yesterday. She was hilarious. And so people want to see little pieces of your life. And so share that, like be generous and share the love or the beauty in your, in your little corner of the world, right? So Heather, would love to hear what your next goal is and what your biggest fear is. Can we, can we go there for a second? <laughs> sure. Um, next goal is, I don't know, getting my three. I've only got one right now. Um, just pulling in three and going from there. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when mm -hmm. and in the process, doing all that I can um, to make it happy and happen and be as real as possible. That's my goal through every step, be as real as possible and don't lose myself in that. You know what I mean? Like sometimes vision, your vision can cloud your judgment and I want my, my authenticity to shine through. Mm -hmm. Um, because I am awkward and weird and that is totally cool with me. I'm fine with that. And I want that to be what resonates with people. Um, and then my biggest fear is, I don't know. I mean, if you would ask me the other day, it would have been everybody judging me for, um, being a plexus girl or an MLM company and all of the thing, you know, all the negative things. But right now I don't really care what anybody thinks. So maybe that's my biggest fear is that I don't know what my biggest fear is. I don't know. Okay. What should I be scared of? Hmm. You don't have, like, this is the thing. Once you get over one fear, there's going to be the next thing to conquer. Like you don't, I don't know that we ever arrive. Like there's going to be different things at different parts in our journey. Um, one question for me, for you is, is there anything that you feel like you're avoiding because you're scared to do it or any person that you're afraid to talk to? Talk to? Um, I would say that there are definitely people that I am afraid to reach out to like individually. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about them seeing posts, just um, I don't know, just that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Mm -hmm. So what is your biggest fear with that? Um, just the judgment, just the, um, coming at it from a negative point of view. Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing that could happen? Um, honestly, nothing. I mean, I guess they could just say that, they don't believe it's going to work and that they think I'm wasting my time and money. And I mean, I'm a people pleaser, so it's hard for me to wrap my head around that, um, that rejection that that's hard for me. Mm -hmm. So getting past that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So let's talk about that for a minute. So the fear of rejection, mm -hmm. and that's something that you're going to have, like, not the fear of it necessarily, but there are going to be no's, but does that have to mean anything about you or me? Or no. can it just be, can we be unattached to the outcome? Be like, okay, like totally fine. I think that that is what has helped me be 
casual and, and, and unattached in the sense of it's okay if they say no. It's it maybe a not yet, or maybe it's not for them. Maybe, well, they think it's not for them. Maybe they don't have enough information to make a, to make a decision yet. The, I will say that when I have looked back over the course of my Plexus career, <laughs> the people that have been the most successful in light of working the business have been people I've been scared to talk to or contact. So that I was just talking about this when on a call or was I coaching someone today? I don't remember, but just the awareness piece of when that comes up, <laughs> we need to, we need to address it head on and like, don't wait, but like act with urgency with those. If you have another little column on your paper that you like, maybe even make some dream teamers, like who would I love, love, love to be on my team? Like they would be fun to work with. They're people, people, they're care, you know, charismatic at some level. They, you know, maybe have a wide network. Maybe they're already in a customer service type business. Maybe they're entrepreneurs, like, but being okay with like, we're, we want to connect with everybody. And it's kind of like politicians, po politics, like running for politics, they knock on a lot of doors, but you can't take it personally that some people hate you and some people love you like about half and half, <laughs> right? which network marketing isn't quite as cutthroat as that. But however, there's things, there's lessons to be learned there, right? And so this mm -hmm. is a skill set we're growing and expanding. So <clears throat> I love to think about what is the worst case scenario and also what is the best case scenario? What if one of those scary people that you're like, oh, I don't know about talking to them. What if they said, oh my word, I saw your post. I saw your live. I actually had been meaning to talk to you. I just like life has been crazy busy. What if they said that? <laughs> that's a good point i need to i need to reach out i'm gonna make a note i'm reaching out to the scary people in my life mm -hmm. and it doesn't all have to be the scary people either but that gives us practice it's like it's really empowering actually even when you do the scary thing and be like hey i just got practice expanding my comfort zone and getting better at talking with people i don't know about y'all but like i'm not naturally extroverted like I'm actually more naturally a wallflower, not, not an engager. And when I started Plexus, I started to think, mm, I need to be more like my mom. Like she can meet people on an elevator and they're coming to Thanksgiving dinner once we get off the elevator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like being willing to even engage more in person. I think some people are more naturally, you know, in-person type people and others of us like tend to like to hide behind the screen. <laughs> and so whatever our natural bent is, like capitalize on that, of course, but then also, mm, how can I like edge, edge into my comfort zone? Carissa, do you have anything to chime in? Uh, you're like mind reading tonight every time that I have something. Okay. So I want to share a story about that because what happens when you do things that you would not normally do and you get, a, you get a few of those moments under your belt where like, what's the best thing that can happen? And you start to experience some of those in reality. I, it can serve as fuel to keep doing it. Now, even if no fruit comes from it, even if you just do it and go, whoo, I didn't die. That's a win. Um, but I had a story really early in my Plexus journey. My, one of my, one of my uplines, Jessica Heffley, she started sending me screenshots of just people from my friends list. She was just like, reach out to all these people because we were trying to grow really quick. And she sent me a, the, the face of a girl that I hadn't talked to since college. You know, all the doubts flood in of like she, what she's going to think about me if I reach out to share Plexus when we haven't even talked since college. Um, so of course I was like, no way, like not doing it. Um, and I had my moment that you talked about, Megan. My moment was late at night watching videos on YouTube and catching the bigger vision of this business. So I went back to her list and I started those conversations. And this girl was Heather Ramirez. She's not on the call tonight, but I will just never forget. I was, we were in the car on the way to like Christmas vacation. She saw my message. She responded and she said, actually, I am interested in Plexus. I have an autoimmune disease. And if it works for me, I want to sell it. Like talk about a, what's the best that can happen moment. Like she didn't think any of the things I was fearing she would think. She was like, I have noticed you posting about it. I am interested. And if it works for me, I want to sell it. Like the absolute awesomest outcome you could have. So, um, and when those things happen, they don't happen to people who never take risks. They don't happen to people who aren't starting conversations and who aren't working. Like the, the, the more scary things you do, the luckier you get. And so 
when you get to, when you start to take those risks and then you start to see those rewards, we let that become our rocket fuel. Kind of like you said about your vision, you let that spur you on to do more of those kind of things. And then you experience more miracles. Um, and then you just keep letting those miracles build on themselves. So Megan, if we want, we have 10 minutes or so more, and we can see if Deborah is able to unmute. Um, but I see that she's on her phone, like maybe called in. So sometimes it's a little harder to unmute from a phone. There's like a phone command. If anyone wants to like Google it, there's some sort of like star nine or something like that. If you want to unmute on a phone, That's which we, hilarious. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I see you, Deborah. Do you hear me here? We can take a second because we've got time. Let me just Google it. And I'm, and everyone helped me pay attention to see if Deborah gets unmuted. How to unmute on Zoom from phone. And we'll just also open it up right now too. Like just popcorn around if anyone wants to pop in the chat, I'll check real fast. Oh, you guys, I am so, it was literally star nine. No, it's really star nine. Wow. Nine, star nine. So okay. Deborah, see if you can press star nine and see if you can unmute. And then yes, meanwhile, we can be watching the chat for questions. And then Megan included, Megan actually texted me a question that I'm happy to just um, chat about for a bit. So here's a question. Um, what is the rudest comment you've ever received and how did you respond? Take some thinking, you know, I don't like to dwell on that stuff. I would, res I would respond by not dwelling on it but sometimes those things can become a recording in our brains mm -hmm. i mean i i here's okay here's one thing i would say i talked about practicing better thoughts and sometimes I, this was just one i became aware of recently is sometimes we tell ourselves oh my goodness every time i start to do something good that satan just attacks or i heard a version of this from you heather that was like i just i have vision but i don't want my vision to cloud my judgment you know that idea of like i'm going to be attacked with you know the the bad when i'm going for something good but i would encourage you to practice the thought i resist the devil and he flees from me I resist the devil and he flees from me. And then I don't, I don't feel those attacks anymore. And honest truth in my plexus business is I sort of wonder why I'm not attacked more because I feel like I'm pretty vocal and I feel like I'm pretty, um, pretty exhortative. Like I'm out there kind of speaking truth and not necessarily trying to tiptoe around people's feelings. And I wonder why I'm not attacked more or rude things talked about more. Um, but I did, I did an event in February and I had met a girl at a restaurant who I really liked and wanted to invite her to this event. And so I reached out and said, Hey, what's your address? And I mailed her a card in the mail to invite her. And then with everybody I sent a card to, I started a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, did you get my card? Um, I hope to see you at my event. Well, this girl who I'd really liked at this restaurant that I had I had followed on social media since then, I was pulling up to my event in February. This was the first in-person event I had hosted in quite some time. We had had COVID, I'd had a baby. So I was nervous. I was like putting myself out there vulnerably. I pulled up to do the event and I got her reply to my text that said, did you get my card? Um, I hope you can come. And her reply was, um, Oh, I didn't realize this was a plexus thing. Um, not interested, you know, just like really short. And I was like, oh, crestfallen. And I'm pulling up to the event right at that moment. So of course I'm needing to dial my energy level way back up um, and remind myself of what I know to be true. Megan, you talked about like, no one can take away that moment God gave you and no one can take away what you've experienced in just two months on your products. Um, but I paused and I took a breath and I calmed my nervous system down and I asked myself, um, why did, why am I having this event? Why did I invite her? Why did I invite anybody? And I replied to her and said, yes, it is a plexus event. I'm really excited about it. And I'm really looking forward to getting to know some other like-minded moms and hopefully bless you by sharing a little bit of my story. Um, I'm sad that you can't make it. I would still love to get together sometime soon. I just responded calmly and truthfully 
-hmm. in accordance with my why and what I was doing. And she still follows me. She still looks at my stories, you know, and you can certainly relate with that, that kind of person who has said no a few times, but is continuing to watch over the years. So we can't know what it is in their past. Everybody, everybody is viewing life through their lens and they're projecting onto you based on their story. And we can't know their story or why they're reacting, how they're reacting, but we can just continually remind ourselves what's true who God says we are. You've got your husband backing you. Um, okay. I'm going to unmute unmuted. She didn't unmute. You did Deborah. Awesome. So Deborah, Hey, are you talking to me? I am. Oh Welcome. my goodness. You can see me. Nope. I can just see a black screen with your name, but I can hear you just Okay. Fine. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Good. So yeah, so this is your chance to just chat with the diamonds a little bit about okay. you. You've been listening in, so you've kind of heard what's been discussed so far. Is there anything still lingering for you that you are maybe hitting an obstacle and wondering, like, how do I overcome that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm a mother of a large family. I'm 64 years old, mm -hmm. and I have um, done direct marketing on and off for years, um, off for a lot of years, and then on, and then was doing super well, and then COVID hit, and the company just went splash. Don't even know what happened to that company. Love their product, but it was very different than Plexus. And um, I had tried Plexus a couple of years ago. I'm starting it again, and of course, I'm looking at the possibility of the business end of it. Um, <clears throat> but I feel honestly, I can say to you that I look at the energy you all have and you're young. And I remember when I was young and had so much energy and so much um, excitement. And, and then I, then I think of myself and I think, I still feel that youth, but I know that I'm not. And I want to be on, honest. Um, I just think, do I even have it in me anymore? <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know if there's there's other women who are <clears throat> men who are older and wonder the same thing or ask you the same thing. And and what do you say to those people? I love that question. You know, I was talking to a, a friend my age mm -hmm. recently who built her business up to senior Ruby and then took a big step back for a couple of years. She's still in Plexus, but took a step back for a couple of years. And I heard her say something similar. She said, I don't know if I have it in me to rebuild. Mm -hmm. and you haven't built a team with Plexus before, but you have built in other companies. So I, yes. I hear that same sort of echo with you, just that question of like, do I have the energy? Do I have the youthfulness? Um, do I have it in me? Mm -hmm. um, and so what I would ask you is how would, how would you like to feel about building a Plexus business right now where you're at? How would you, how would you like to feel about it? Um, <clears throat> I, I like the product. I love what I've seen it do. My husband's done the reset. He lost nine pounds in the three days. And, um, I am, I am feeling, I cannot believe like my stomach has become more normalized. I was getting, uh, I, uh, to the point to where, um, my my gut was hurting me almost every day and I've never had that in my life until just recently and um and so that's why I've tried plexus okay because of my gut mm -hmm. and I've noticed now I've gotten past that and I feel like it's beginning to something's happening that's so good I had some kind of a pain in my lower left gut and my husband thought I was kind of crazy because I had a, um, like my nerve, this is strange. My nerve on the left side would almost as if something got stuck in the gut. And then my, my leg would just like jerk 
at night. Like Whoa. some some kind of nerve that's connected that goes down to your leg. I don't understand it, but I or through. Um, and and <clears throat> it's happened to me about three times. But that whole problem after a week is like gone. Yeah. So I'm beginning to see success. I'm beginning, and I've only been on this about a week, maybe Megan knows, but probably about a week. And I'm already getting excited about it. Um, I have had Lyme's disease. I've had uh, treatment and I'm a lot better than I used to, but, but Plexus, I did take Plexus for a while and it did help me with my slime symptoms. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm, um, had, had treatment for two months in Arizona. And so, so, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of like right at that edge where I'm starting to do the plexus mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to feel so much better yep. and thinking, I know there's lots of people my age that probably need to be on plexus. So you're starting to get excited you're feeling it working. Yes. But there's, there's a voice saying, oh, but do I have it in me? Like, That's it. Yes. And so what's the, what's the problem that you're afraid of? Like what, what's the risk? <laughs> Can you put words to it? Probably. <clears throat> I suppose it's probably just, I've got to get up and do it again. Mm -hmm. that's probably my problem like do I have it in me like I said mm -hmm. to get up and do it again and how okay when you and when you have the thought of like mm -hmm. oh I gotta get up and do it again what mm -hmm. does it feel like what's the feeling um probably just afraid to yeah mm -hmm. is it probably like just yeah, just fear, fear, kind of holding back. Okay, and I still want to dig just a bit deeper with you on the feeling. So you're the you're afraid and you're holding back. Mm -hmm. of what the I've got to get up and do it again brings brings a feeling of fear of what happening in you to you through like um well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's a lot of things. Okay. Let's I would have one. to think about it and write it down. <laughs> I think you that know one of them. I think you know one of them. Mm. I suppose it's probably having the energy to do it. Yeah. So is it a feeling of tired? Is it like yes? Got to get up and do it again. And that makes me tired. Like anticipatory yes. fatigue. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so that's why, that's why, yes, that's it. Okay. So we do this on our coaching calls a lot as we try to get, we try to drill to the one sentence that you are, you are thinking that is creating um, the feeling that you have right now. And so I, I want to encourage you um, when you have that thought of like, Oh, do I have it in me? I, I got to do it again. And I, it says, you said that you built successfully in this other company and then they tanked. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you, you know, is there a feeling of weight that you wasted that effort or that you could potentially go to a, a lot of effort and it be really exhausting and maybe not fruitful? Um, It's okay mm -hmm. if I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm just. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Okay. So I would ask you again, um, how do you want to feel about getting up and building something again? And you don't, it doesn't have to be the truth that you feel it right now, but I would encourage you to, now that you have drilled down to that sentence, I would encourage you to come up with a thought that you want to practice when it comes to getting up and building something again. Okay. 
what, what pops to mind? Like when you think this is the thought I want in my head as I, as when I feel that twinge of excitement. And when I think about a lot of people, my age who actually do need plexus, who may have the weird nerve thing happening or the, mm -hmm. the gut problem, giving them pain. Like I get those twinges of excitement. And then my brain is trying to protect me by saying, Oh, but do you have it in you to get up and do it again? What do you want to tell, what do you want to tell your brain in response? I need to tell my brain that that's just selfishness because people need this more than they, Ooh. more than they don't. And that there's probably so many people who have not really even heard of Plexus much at my age, the older people. I love that. And you don't have to say it unkindly. So you don't have to tell yourself, well, that's just so selfish because your brain is trying to protect you from expending a lot of effort on something that might not pan out. That's, uh -huh. that's the brain's job is to make sure you don't die. So you don't have to say it unkindly and tell yourself <laughs> so selfish for thinking that you can just simply say, yes, true. I hear you, but also I don't want to be selfish and keep a gift to myself. There are so many people who need this. You've said that okay. at, least five, at least five times in this conversation. You've said there are so many people who need this. And yes. so I would just kindly and compassionately re respond to yourself and remind yourself that there are so many people who need this and I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to keep yes. it to myself. And, okay. And, and maybe just practice saying, you know what, like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not climbing Mount Everest today or this month and maybe, yes. maybe get yourself a little bite-sized goal there. You know, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So what right. is, what's the next like bite-sized goal that you are going for? Have you and Megan chatted about it? Um, not yet. I've, I have made, made a list. Okay. So I'm in the process of making the list and, but speaking with you all is helping me to think of other people that I don't even have on the list. You know, I love like, that. That's why we yes. get on Tuesday. We put ourselves in a position to be encouraged. Okay. So have you, um, have you enrolled one friend? I'm sorry. What was that? Have you enrolled one friend yet? Refer to friend? No. Okay. Well, why don't we say that that is your next bite-sized goal is your first bless a friend. And when your brain starts to go, oh no, I'm, I've got to get up and do it again. This whole, this whole Mount Everest that stands before me. And I don't know if I have the energy to do it. You can say, but I can bless a friend. I can take the next right step. There are okay. so many people who need this. I can, someone is ready for change today and I can find yeah. them. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I Very love good. It. I love Thank it. Thank okay, you. Well, I appreciate you unmuting and just sharing so honestly, both of you. I just really gleaned a lot from listening to you. And I, and every time we do okay. these calls, the people getting to observe are absorbing so much from encouragement from you guys. So thank you guys for unmuting. So we'll see everyone next Tuesday for just our leadership discussion. Be listening to Brittany Howard's leadership podcast this week. And next week, we'll just do our 30 minutes in and out. And then we'll be doing all of our other sharing, inviting, posting, messaging. That's what we're spending our time on. Um, Megan, did you have anything else you wanted to say? No. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Happy August. <laughs>